Hi there, welcome to part 3 of multi threading in C. In this video, we are going to learn about future end promises. Uh, this is the new way of creating asynchronous code in C and a must to know if you want to write good async C. So, what are futures? Future is nothing uh, but a mechanism of doing asynchronous programming in C 11 onwards, and this asynchronous city can be achieved without creating explicit threads. And the promise is nothing but a container of the future. So this is a short introduction of what is meant by for promises and future. Now let's see, go ahead and see the code. So before going into future and promises, let's just recap how the threads are created in C++ as it is being shown here. Now we will get rid of all of the thread related issue and we'll go into the future. So to do this, we need to include a file called future. Okay, so let's say I am creating an async function. Uh, let's say I am creating an async function. Uh, I just print it over here that I am inside an async function. And in the main thread, we, I can create a future which takes in a template argument the return type of the async function and I call the async inbuilt async function with a launch parameter called launch async and then the name of the function I am calling this async function okay now what this line does is that it, it makes sure that async function launch asynchronously which means uh, it is launched uh, in a separate thread over here and it's execute independent of the main thread and the main thread continue to execute and to get the return value in the main thread we need to call a function called get so what get does is that it will make it will wait till the time this function execution is complete if if it is already completed by the time we call get it will remain return immediately so let's let's see by running the program you can see it's written i'm inside a async function but how do we know it's in a different thread so let's try to print the thread id i'm printing the thread id in the main thread as well as i'll print it in the async function or let's say and now if i run the program it will be like this you can see that the thread id is actually different for main and async okay so what happened that as as some as soon as this line comes execute it launch a async function in in a asynchronous way it it's mainly a separate thread but there is another option called deferred what deferred does is that it it doesn't calls the function over here and when this line is called it calls the function when we call the get so you can see that the behavior is actually same but with the function get called when actually get is called and you can check from this that the thread id of both the main thread and async thread is same so the function get executed here in the main thread itself instead of being in the async thread and there is a, another option called any which tells uh, this async function to do whatever they want it can be launched asynchronously or it can be launched in a different way so this is the way to create a async behavior <coughs> sorry so why this is important this is important because you can get the values from future only once let's see if i try to call the get function again and looks like it is supposed to crash and it says it, it actually crashed because once you executed the get you will not be able to call the get function again uh, let's park it for a while so async is also used to get the return value uh, from the asynchronous execution let's say i am changing the return type as int and i am returning the value called 100 then what i will do is that i will take the future return value as int and i can actually print this so this should get me uh, 100 so this is stores the return value and via get i get the return value you can see that return value is returned over here 
Similarly, I can pass some value also over here. And let's say I say value plus 100. And similar to what we do it in our thread function, we call a value over here. And in this case, we'll get 300 the output. Now, there are chances in my code that I accidentally call get again. So there is a function which checks the validity of get. We can call, check it by calling valid. If it is valid only, then do it. And again, if I say, if it is valid, then do this. Uh, let's put a else print out saying that invalid. Okay, so we can, when we execute the program, we can see that first time 300 get got print and second time invalid got printed. Okay, so this is the way futures are used. Now coming back to promises, let's understand before using promises that promises are kind of container of future. So promises contains future. So let's just get rid of this function for a while to understand promise. So I can just like future I can create promise with let's say type int uh, say I call it my promise okay and I can create a future out of promise uh, fut equal to my promise dot get future so this gets me the future of future from my promise now you we see that with the future we can call a get function and it should return me a value and that value is filled by promise i can anytime call my promise dot set value as 100 so and when i just run the program my future will print the 100 okay over here now you will see say that what is the use of promise uh, it is gently used in conjunction with separate threads where you want to set the uh, future values inside a thread. So let's just uh, create a thread function uh, again. Let's say it, it takes some promise, promise of int and as reference that let's say it's prom. Okay, and I am setting the value in promise over here. Let's say I am setting it as 200. Inside the main program, what I will do is that I will create a thread. I will call thread func in the thread and I will pass by reference my promise. Okay. And I will wait for thread to join. Now, I have passed my promise in the thread. Okay, let's say I make sure that this is in the main thread. Okay, and I'm setting the value to the promise over here. So let's see. You can say you can see that value is actually set into the future over here. Okay, so I mean again, you might be thinking that what is the uh, I mean, why should we do that? Uh, to clearly understand, let's say I'm sleeping here for some time. You know how to say clone dot seconds. Let's say sleeping for two seconds. Uh, before calling thread, let's say I'm just calling name. Okay, so if I run this program, you can see that main thread is there. And it gets the promise after two seconds because promise value is set after two seconds. But what will happen after this? I can put the sleep after this. And when I run the program, you can say that this happens immediately though the thread ended after two seconds. So this is the way you can set the value inside the promise at any point of time and you can get the future value in the future. You don't need to pass a pointer or wait for a thread to be completed before setting or returning a value. So that, that's the place where promises are used. So that's all about uh, promise and future. I hope uh, I was able to explain what it means. If you have any question, please write in the comments. I'll get back to you.
Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.